All right, guys, what's going on? It looks like we've got some people hopping in here. I'm going to give everyone a little bit of uh, a little bit of time here just to make sure everyone hops on. If you guys can hear us, can you just put in the chat like thumbs up or yes? Give us an idea that uh, audio is good. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate you uh, letting us know. All right, great. So we got Chris hopping on as well. Awesome. Well, Mike, let's go ahead and let's kick things off. Uh, for everyone here that's on the call, I'd like to introduce everyone to uh, Mike Cambright. Mike, um, owner of Investor Machine and, and a lot of other businesses too. And, and Mike, I'd love for you to introduce yourself. But um, I think that it's, you know, what you're going to be talking about today, you guys provide a very unique service that I think is, is extremely valuable for investors. And I'm really excited to, to hear what, what you have to share. Yeah, well, I'm excited to share. So thanks for the opportunity to be here. Uh, hey, everybody. I'm excited to uh, kind of share some stuff that's working for us. We, we generate leads for hundreds of top real estate investors. And I want to kind of share what we're doing and what we're seeing and some things that you can apply uh, to your business and really think about. And I think this little downturn we've had in the market over the past six months or so has really helped a lot of us kind of wake up. So again, Josh, thanks for the opportunity to be here. I uh, hope, uh, hope you guys get some value here today. I would love to interact a little bit in the uh, chat as well. So if you, uh, if you, if you like what you hear, throw me a little love or something because uh, it keeps, when you're presenting for a long period of time, it makes you feel like, sometimes you're like, is anybody listening to this? <laughs> so, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well guys, uh, today I really want to talk about um, creating a marketing and sales machine that allows you your business to thrive and allows you to scale. So I think a lot of you guys would agree that sales and marketing really drives the drives your business. But what I've seen is there's a lot of things that people could do wrong uh, operationally or not having the right goals in place or things like that, that don't allow them to be as successful as they could be because they're just throwing money at marketing and they're hustling really hard on the sales side. And if you guys are working with Tiffany and Josh, I know that you guys are a little more buttoned up than the average investor for sure. So um, what I wanna talk about today is kind of a, a marketing and sales success system. And the roadmap that I think you need to follow to basically achieve all that it is that you can achieve in this business. And if you've been in the business for a long time, I've been in the business for 15, over a little over 15 years now. Um, it's it set me financially free. I, I was, uh, you know, a, I kind of call myself a corporate refugee. So left corporate America 15 years ago to focus just on real estate. And that's changed a lot over the years from kind of what I've done and the roles I play and the businesses I have and all that for sure. Um, but it, it has set me free. And honestly, I've kind of dedicated most of the rest of my life to helping other people achieve that freedom in real estate as well, because you get to a point to where, you know, and I'm not saying this from a place of ego or bragging or anything like that. Like I, I always want to make more money. I want like pallets of hundred dollar bills in my office right now. Right. But you get to a point to where you need more, there needs to be more purpose in what you're doing. And so I've kind of dedicated a big part of my life to just sharing what works and connecting people to make sure that they're helping each other. Kind of going forward. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, who am I. So I'm a husband and a father. This is my wife, Lindsay. Um, she's really the brains of all of our operations. Josh, I won't. Uh, I won't say that uh, Tiffany's the brains of all your operations, but you <laughs> hey, can, she is. Uh, she is 100. percent She would say it, but I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Say it. So, uh, but you can appreciate um, having, and a lot of you probably have a, a spouse that you work with. Just the the importance of that role. For you and your business. And so my wife is often behind the scenes. She doesn't, uh, you know, she kind of says she's the woman behind the curtain. At one point, she started to refer to herself as the puppet master. And I was like, well, what does that make me? Uh, so I liked behind the curtain a little bit better than the puppet master. But uh, my wife is, uh, is just kind of a power, you know, woman for sure. And uh, been a huge part of our business from the very beginning, also a corporate refugee. Uh, and this is my son, Jake, who's always uh, kind of become the investor fuel model for our mastermind. He's always wearing investor fuel shirts and hats and stuff like that. But uh, this is us on a recent trip to uh, Colorado. I'm a single family investor. So I started in 2008, summer of 2008, and uh, flipped about 400 houses in the DFW market was primarily, you know, I've definitely assigned 150 houses or so, but primarily a rehabber. So really like to uh, rehab. I love the transformation, even though it's it's a harder part of the business. 
and uh, have a rental portfolio here, single family rental portfolio in the Dallas market, which is where I'm located at. I'm a multifamily investor. So starting about five years ago, I started dabbling and now it's my primary investment vehicle. Uh, so I'm a general partner in probably about eight or 10 deals we've done over the past four years that range from kind of 15 million up to 45 million and uh, kind of focusing on that going forward. I'm a mastermind leader. I run um, one of the top masterminds in America called Investor Fuel. Josh and Tiffany are members of that. We have an amazing community of investors that are helping each other. And really, this is a, it's, it's a, it's a really great group for kind of community wise. And uh, I, I would say that I don't like to call myself an expert. I'm going to, you know, I don't have the ego to say that, but I've been in, in real estate a long time and I've really focused a lot on kind of cracking the code on lead generation. And that's a lot of what I'm going to share with you guys today. So uh, I'm the uh, co-founder. I have a partner in this named Jason Lewis out of Salt Lake City, who's probably the largest wholesaler in the state of Utah. And I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Investor Machine, which I'll talk a little bit more about a little bit later. But we have a very unique uh, process for gathering data that honestly nobody is doing. And I realize everybody that says that they, everybody that sells data says that their data is better. Everybody says that because it's easy to say. Uh, I'll share with you what we do. And there's nobody that puts in as much work for uh, as we do to gather unique data right in your market, right? It comes from the county courthouse and local cities and stuff like that. And we do some really unique uh, stuff there. So that's a little bit about me. So I can't, uh, since we're on a webinar versus a meeting, I want to ask, who are you guys? So I'll at least ask you a couple of questions. Uh, maybe you could kind of chat in as to where you're joining from. Uh, and I'll ask you guys a couple of questions as well. And maybe you just do a thumbs up or a yes or a no or whatever, but question for you to get a little bit to know about you, like who wants more financial freedom and time freedom in your life? I think that hundred percent of you would agree with that, but uh, let me know. Maybe I'm wrong. So my next question is who wants to work harder and more than you already are? Anybody want to do that? That's kind of, kind of a big boo, right? Like nobody wants to do that. Although I'm sure a lot of you are working really hard. Um, and I I can appreciate that because I we work really hard too. Uh, and I guess one more question for you guys is, who wants to learn how to build a scalable business using sales and marketing? That's what we're going to be talking about today. In fact, that's the roadmap that I'm going to share with you. I like to call it the roadmap to freedom. I've seen real estate... Um, change a lot of lives. And I've seen some people that do really well for a while, and then they hit a point where they just get stuck or they fail or they flounder, or they just get stuck in what I'll kind of call more of a job than a business, right? And so they're, they may be the owner, the CEO, but they very much have a job, right? So if you resonate with that, um, I get it. I get it, right? And that's kind of our job is to talk about that. So again, today we're going to be talking about how to create a marketing and sales machine to help you dominate in your market. I'm going to be taking you through this roadmap that I call the marketing and sales success system. By the way, uh, I've you guys are the first people to ever see this presentation. And this uh, is talking a lot about the direction of Investor Machine. Many of the people inside of our team, other than our ownership team, have not even seen this yet. So this is like hot off of the presses for sure. And I'm excited to kind of share with you because it's the direction that we're going as a company. And I want to talk it, about it in the in the context of how you can apply these things, even if you're not working with us. So um, first, I want to dive in and I'm going to jump around a little bit here. I want to talk about inbound lead generation. And a lot of people, um, you know, what I've seen is a lot of real estate investors do their own marketing. There's nothing inherently wrong with that, except that a lot of us as real estate investors are doing everything, right? We're, we're like chief bottle washer, we're cleaning, we're cleaning the bathroom, like a light bulb's out in our office and we're doing that. We're responsible for marketing. We got to go check on our contractors. We're doing too many things, right? And so the problem is if you're doing your own marketing and a lot of things in the business um, that you're clearly spread thin. There's no way you could do it as effectively as if that was your full-time job. Same thing with acquisitions. If you're running your company and doing acquisitions, there's no way you have time to scale the acquisitions of your company and run the day-to-day -day business and deal with all the administrative burden and raise money and check on your rehabs and all those things, right? So uh, what I've seen over this last little downturn here is that a lot of people that were spending a fair bit of money on lead generation um, started to struggle because they didn't have the right team in place. Um, they didn't have the right goals. Like they didn't really, it wasn't, they weren't very clear on what they were trying to accomplish. 
They maybe didn't have the right skill set for their team. And Dispo was just way too easy in the past uh, than it is now, right? It's it's a lot more complicated now. If you're if you're people that I know that their Dispo was really buttoned up even before this downturn are some of the ones that are doing the best right now because they're able to monetize deals that others can't, right? They just know a way to get those deals sold for a little bit more than everybody else. And that could be the difference between your business getting by and thriving, right? So what I like to say is for people that didn't have uh, the right goals in place, and we're going to dive into each of these a little bit more, they weren't really tracking their KPIs properly. They weren't very buttoned up from a, from a skill standpoint and dispo. In Texas, this uh, little thing that we call you're all hat and no cattle, right? So you've got some leads coming in. You look like you're a baller, but you're not. You're struggling, right? So uh, so I want to kind of dive into um, the marketing and sales success system. And we're going to start down in the lower left here and kind of work our way through. Like step one is really goal setting. And you got, you've all heard this comment before that failing to plan is planning to fail. And I'm responsible for some of this early on too. Like when you're making a lot of money or you're doing deals, sometimes your goal is just, I want to make more money. Like I don't have a very clearly defined goal. Or sometimes you'll do an annual goal planning process um, and you put it in a folder somewhere or you file it in Dropbox and you have a goal out there, but you're not really using it to operate your business on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, right? And I'm just going to tell you that that is no way to operate. And I've, I did it for years, so I get it. I would set these goals. It was very academic and it was like, made me feel good. But then we jump into the business in the day to day and we're just grinding, trying to make as much money as we can, thinking that maybe we'll hit our goal, but we're not using our goal to drive our business. For example, we're not using our goals to figure out exactly how many leads we need to generate and how much we need to spend on advertising to hit those goals. We're not hiring on our team or training on our team around hitting those goals. And so I think a lot of people that do set goals, if you're lucky enough to set that, a lot of times aren't using that as your driving force for your business every single day. Your weekly meetings, your monthly meetings you're having with your team are not all centered around this was our annual goal. This is what we need to accomplish in the next week or the next 30 days to hit those goals, right? And so for those of you that have been through an EOS or Empire implementation, it's really important to use those systems to help drive your business. And they ask you to set a 10-year goal. Like none of us can think 10 years out. That's way out, right? But you can certainly plan out two years back into a year and then back into the quarters and the weeks and the days and the activities for sure, what you need to do. So without a detailed set of goals that allow you to kind of reverse engineer how much you should be marketing in the first place to hit your goals, you're going to struggle, right? At the end of the day, this is one of the easiest businesses to reverse engineer. And it, it won't turn out exactly as you've planned. But if you know that you want to make a million dollars a year, let's just say you want to, and let's just talk about gross revenue for now. You want gross revenue of a million dollars a year, and you have an idea based on your exit strategy mix that on average, you make 20K per deal, then you know you need to do 50 deals to hit that million dollars, right? And you can back into, well, to hit 50 deals, I need 10 leads per deal, so I need 500 deals. And if I divide that, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to try to do math on here, but if I divide that by month, I need to get X many leads per month that turn into those deals, right? We can reverse engineer how much we need to have. And every single day you can be looking at, are we on track to generate the leads we need to do the deals we need to hit our annual goal? Does that make sense, guys? Is everybody following me here? Um, so it's really, really important. And I know this is a little bit academic and this is not the sexy side of the business. And that's one of the problems with a lot of real estate investors is we like the sexy side, uh, but we don't like to do some of the work. And what I like to tell people is, if you do the stuff that you don't like to do, you do the hard stuff that's not sexy, you can get sexy. Whatever sexy is for you, travel, more time with your family, you know, a Lambo, whatever it is for you, you can get those things if you do the hard work. So does that make sense, guys, on the goal side? So next, we are going to jump into, um, we're going to jump into a skills assessment. So uh, I want to talk about this a little bit, and I'm actually going to have you guys do a little exercise here. I want you to rate yourself, and I'm going to give you a couple of things. So if you are if you have a piece of paper handy and a pen, I want you to write down a couple of things here. I want you to write down on separate lines, marketing, sales, operations, finance and accounting is kind of one, and HR or team building, let's say. Each of those five areas of your business. Just write that down for a second here. And then I want you to score yourself 
on a scale of one to 10. 10 is you're the best there is. And I guess zero is you like totally suck, but I think nobody's going to give themselves a zero. But uh, where do you where do you fit on that assessment, right? And nobody's watching you right now. So be honest with yourself because you'd only be lying if you did anything other than that. And I just want you to kind of rate yourself on how good you are at these things. And this is, you know, the point of doing that is to help you understand where your weak points are. And the beauty of scaling up a business like you guys are doing with Josh and Tiffany, or like we help people do at Investor Machine, is that we're helping people scale up their business. So they're not responsible for every single th part of the business, right? Um, so just know where your weak points are. My next question is, do you clearly understand your profile type, your personality, right? Have you have you been through an assessment like predictive index is what we use. There's DISC. There's a lot of other profile types out there. There's a ton of them now. But have you been through that and you understand what your tendencies are? And a lot of us as business owners, we want to believe that we're good at everything. But if you're honest with yourself, you're just not, right? There's just certain things that you're not. And the truth is, is if you're really good at sales, you're probably not really good at a lot of other parts of the business, the administrative parts. You're probably not detail-oriented enough to do a lot of those things, right? And although marketing sometimes comes off as an extension of sales, I'm just telling you, when you're data-driven, like we're going to talk about today, doing marketing right requires somebody that is very detail-oriented. And if that's not your skill set, then you probably shouldn't be doing it. One thing I ask people is, would anybody else hire you to do their marketing for them? And if the answer is no, then my question is, is why did you hire you, right? And you could ask yourself that for a lot of roles. Like, would somebody hire you to be an acquisitions manager? And it's okay if you're not a good acquisition manager. Just don't try to be that person because your business is only struggling if you're trying to force yourself to do something that you're just not good at, right? So it's really important to understand what your tendencies are, what your skill set is, and for you to understand what you need for your team as well, right? So the next one we're going to jump into is building the perfect team. And is anybody out there guilty of this? I, I have been in the past of hiring a family member or hiring somebody that you know, or hiring somebody that, you know, seems to work well with people. Like that really, people really like to talk to that guy, right? And it's just like, in my mind, that that's how I used to find salespeople. I'd be like, yeah, they're pretty, per I like to, I like to interact with them. Like that's somebody I'd like to have a beer with. Is that somebody that could be a sales guy for me? Yeah, I think so. Right. And so like, yeah, just as that's a worse decision. Right. We've she's not watching this so I can say it. We've hired and fired my wife's sister in the past twice. We <laughs> brought her back and tried again. It didn't work. And I know that I've had lots of people over the years of 15 years. I promise you I've made a lot of mistakes is hiring people that I thought were a good fit. And the problem is, is I usually am hiring them when the role is empty and I need somebody like ASAP. So it's like, I kind of say, it's like going to the grocery store when you're hungry, you end up with a cart full of stuff that you shouldn't probably get just because you're hungry right now. And I want some Doritos right now or whatever it is, right? And so you make bad decisions and it's really, really important that you have very clearly defined, a very clearly defined org chart. And for each of those roles in your business, understand what the predictive index or what the profile should be. Um, what is the background you're looking for? What's a job description? What is the compensation level for this person? Because if you don't, you end up doing stuff. And especially as a small business, they're like, you end up having people that wear too many hats. Yeah, they do some sales for me. And they also go check on rehabs when they're not really on appointments. And you end up kind of spreading people across all these roles. That's the beauty of scaling is you can start to isolate people in the roles they should be in and why you should focus on scaling. It's not just for the sake of making more money. It's for the sake of being able to scale up to you where you can have a real team of real people that are in the right seats. Does that make sense, guys? So... Again, going forward, what you don't want to do is hire people unless they're a perfect fit for the role. And I used to say this, I've said this for a long time, and I don't say it anymore, that if I find a good athlete, I'll find a place for him in my company. And I'm just telling you that's backwards because you're going to end up saying, well, yeah, they're not very good at that, but they can do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And your org chart looks like spaghetti, right? It's just like all over the place and a couple people help with this or that. And this person just quit or got fired or left or they're sick. Hey, can you help do this right now? And sometimes you have to do what you have to do, but you shouldn't design your team around people that you kind of like that. Yeah, they could probably do that thing, right? That's just, it's just asking for trouble. So, and then you have to really build a detailed process for recruiting each role on your team. You really need to have a process for if and when I need to replace that role. This is the job description. Here's a copy of the ad 
that I'm going to use to uh, to put on you know um, the market for that person. These are the questions I'm going to ask them in an interview. This is the compensation that we pay somebody in that role, not just like try to find somebody that's like your your brother's good friend and like, well, what do you need to make? What do you make right now? And like, just kind of wheeling and dealing like that is not how real companies operate. And we all want to run a real company, right? You guys follow me here? Just want to make sure we're on the same page because I'll keep, I'll keep talking, but I want to make sure we're good here. So next we're going to move on to uh, inbound lead generation, right? And this could be a lot of things. Um, there's a lot of people and let me know if you guys are, what you're doing now for inbound lead generation. Are you doing, uh, and I would kind of refer to it as primarily direct mail, pay-per-click, SEO, things that you're doing that have people contact you versus, and I know with Josh and Tiffany, they teach you how to, how to do outbound marketing, the best in the industry, as far as I'm concerned, we're talking about inbound right now. Like, what are you doing for inbound lead generation? And here's what I think. I think there's a lot of people that are trying to do it themselves and they end up not using all the channels and depends on the size of your budget. Like if you have a small, relatively small budget, you shouldn't get spread across lots of channels. But the way that inbound marketing works is you just need to have omnipresence. Like how many of you guys get a postcard or a mailer or you see something on TV and then you go search for it online? Like it's just too easy to go, like somebody is trying to sell me something. Let me go research them. Let me go to their website and learn more. Right. And if you're not spending money on ads and if you if you're not buttoned up from an SEO perspective, who do you think they're going to find? They're going to find your competitor. Right. And so it's really important that you have some omnipresence where people can find you everywhere. They just see no matter where I go, I find you and I like what I see. So it's really important that you're doing all these things. And I I can tell you also and I'm not here to talk bad about outbound lead generation at all. Right. But what we've seen across our hundreds of customers from polling them is that inbound leads, the ROI on inbound leads are typically two to three times higher on outbound leads. I'm not saying you shouldn't do outbound lead generation, but what happens is if you're not tracking your KPIs properly, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit, in, here in a little bit, if you're looking at cost per lead and cost per uh, acquisition, even cost per contract, if you will, cost per closing, um, it's generally going to be higher on direct mail, pay-per-click and SEO. But if you're, if those are the primary KPIs you're tracking, what you're missing out on is that the profits on those deals are typically two to three times higher because, you know, you saw, they sought you out instead of you seeking them out. Right. So you really need to be tracking. And I've been beating this drum for a while now, and I'm starting to get louder. What's called ROAS return on ad spend. How much did you spend on that channel? And what was the return on that? And I will say this for all your lead channels, for those of you that pop into something, I'm going to try this for a couple months. And if it doesn't work, I'm going to pop out. I'm telling you that uh, that's a mistake, right? And, and you do need to pull the plug at some point, but a lot of these channels are, um, they work best over a very long period of time, right? They work best over a long period of time. You like, I'm going to share an example with you that I actually just popped, I popped this into the presentation today because it came from one of our clients this morning that he got a lead from somebody and uh, that that they generated the lead. Uh, it was from a postcard they sent out a year ago, right? And we probably, if you've been in the business for a long time, my longest is about four, 54 months, whatever that is, about four and a half years, somebody that we generated a lead from, and then we followed up for four and a half years and eventually bought the house, right? And the types of people that we buy houses from, you guys know this, they've been distressed usually for years or sometimes decades, right? It just takes like the straw that breaks the camel's back. It took, God forbid, we don't want this, took somebody being in a distressed situation and then they finally lost their job or they finally maxed their credit cards out or God forbid they got sick, right? It just took one more thing to uh, turn that lead into somebody that was finally motivated to do what they probably should have done years ago. Like we all have dealt with those people, right? That house hasn't been updated in 20 years and uh, they've been broke for a long time and have some problem that, that forced them to become more and more distressed over time. So, um, and some questions on, let me do this. I'll, I'll kind of answer some of these questions about if you're on a tight budget, would you recommend we should focus on inbound lead generation? Well, I think for people that are on a tighter budget, that, that is kind of why a lot of folks work on outbound calling, because it is, if you, it takes more of your time, right. But less of your money. And so I kind of advocate if you have more time than money, you should focus on outbound type activities uh, because it's cheaper to generate those leads because you're using your effort 
Um, and so that's what I would advocate. And should we select one over the other? It kind of depends on your level of budget, like how big that is. I think you do marketing in layers. So it kind of depends on what your budget is. SEO, I think everybody should be doing SEO, but the problem is, is back to people wanting immediate gratification or talking about sellers in that respect, they should have made a decision a long time ago. For us as real estate investors, what happens with SEO is a lot of times you throw a little bit of money at it and sometimes not much, and then you expect immediate results and it doesn't happen. So you just quit and give up. The SEO is of all the channels is the longest game kind of play from my perspective, right? So should you be doing it? Yes. Uh, but don't expect to get immediate results. Like it should be something that you can spend a budget on for, and I'm not saying you won't get a deal, but for a year plus with no expectation of getting that back, but knowing that you're building up a brick wall, one brick at a time, and eventually you'll see the results from it. I'm not saying that you won't get a deal before that. It's more of your expectations of what should happen. So I do want to talk, I want to kind of dive into data for a little bit here and talk a little bit about uh, what Investor Machine does, if that's okay. So a lot of us and a lot of real estate investors are guilty for just like throwing money at marketing. And when I started 15 years ago, you couldn't, you, you could do, you could, we could send out mailers to just age and equity lists and have a great return. Like it was less competitive then, nobody had uh, higher quality data. So that's kind of what you did. Um, and so you can't just throw money at market anymore. That doesn't work. You have to be more strategic in this market. And the way you improve now is only going to help you in the years to come when the market does turn or if it gets easier at some point because your skill set is going to be better. And so um, I'd like to share what we do for hundreds of real estate investors right now through uh, the investor machine. So let me just tell you a little bit about this. I want to get back to our regularly, regularly, uh, what do they call it? Our regularly, uh, our normal presentation, sorry, lost for words there. So Investor Machine really is a data company that acts as an agency. So we get some really unique data that I'll talk about in just a moment. And then we have kind of done for you marketing, which up until recently has primarily been data that you can use to, that we skip trace for you to cold call or text message market to and a direct mail. Most of our business is managing direct mail for uh, other folks. So we send millions of pieces of mail a month. We really, and you have an account manager, you really act as a marketing manager. Uh, and we kind of drive the leads for you behind the scenes. So we focus on really hard to get data that I won't say anything bad about any of the national data providers, but none of them have the data that is recorded at the county or city level because you have to go into every county and city generally manually, like online and gather this stuff because it's not uh, available nationally. Things like this, I'll share, there's about 40 lists that we go after. You can see some of them here um, from probates to mowing liens to, you know, we got meth contamination on here, uh, whether they have a debt collection order on their stuff, whether it's uh, a recent bankruptcy, divorce, things like that. These are the lists that we go after. And then we've built software to score all of that data. So effectively what we do in a market where we operate, so where I'm at in Dallas, let's just say Dallas County, Texas, um, for our clients that are here, we're able to score every property in Dallas from top to bottom on what fits their buy box, which I'll come back to, what are the types of houses that they even want to buy, and what is the most distressed based on all the data that we've gathered, and we're updating that nearly real time, and then managing the list, managing the list for everybody and actually executing the marketing for them. And so we know who is the most, who, who is the most likely house to sell like ASAP and who you should never spend any money on marketing to because they have no distress whatsoever, right? And that is in a nutshell of what we do. So we're able, another thing we're able to do is, and I wanna share this as an example from today, is we're able to customize every individual postcard that we send out with our unique data. So I got a message today from, uh, actually it was posted in our Facebook group for our clients, we have a Facebook group. Let me jump forward and show you that first is uh, my buddy Franklin said, this just literally just happened this morning. I put this in our presentation at the last minute because it was it was representative, is that they marketed to somebody and he said, I've received hundreds of postcards over the last two or three years. I throw them all away. Uh, they had a picture of their house using Google Street View. So a lot of people do that. But he said, the message felt direct to us. So I kept this one in case we decided to sell. And also reiterating what I said earlier, that the card was almost a year old. So we've been sitting on this, right? That's the power of direct mail versus other channels is that it has some staying power. So I wanna kind of show you an example 
of this is their postcard. I didn't know what it looked like. I had to ask my team to, because we do this for lots of people, pull this up. But I specifically want to share with you what you see right here under the ways we help people. So it says challenging situations, catching up on back taxes, challenging tenants, removing headaches. Some of these are a little bit vague. But when we go gather data, like we do for these guys, we can merge things into their postcard that are unique to this specific address that we're mailing to, to say, we help people that are going, that are, uh, have struggled with divorce, probate, we're able to actually merge into our postcards, the unique situation that we know is tied to that property, right? There's nobody else that is doing anything like this. And by the way, we have a team of about 80 people that are full-time data miners for us that are going to find this data that get them on the list in the first place. That's why nobody else is doing what we're doing because you have to manually go into markets and mine for this data. But when people see this, it used to, you know, a lot of people use these things and they say, hey, we help people in difficult situations. And, and sometimes you might mention, you know, death, divorce, inheritance, things that are general, right? We're actually able to merge in things that that specific person is going through. And we present it in a way to where they see it and they say, wow, this is what I'm going through. Maybe they can help me. It's not generic. It's unique to them. So anyway, we think that's pretty cool. And it's uh, definitely had results, just like uh, Franklin uh, just said here. So um, a few other things that we do is we uh, are able, our customers basically build buy boxes. So instead of just pulling a whole county and mailing to everybody that has equity or having a few filters on there, you can create filters. We have about 15 different filters for the exact things that you're looking for. Age of the house, price bands, size of the lot, square footage, uh, single level versus dual level, like lots of things that you fill out almost like a survey. And then we shape your list around the types of houses you want to buy in the first place. Now, if you're a wholesaler, you might not care about what type of house that you buy because you're going to try to monetize everything. I used to say, I'll buy a TP if the numbers work, right? But if you're a rehabber or you want to buy and hold, um, I can tell you for sure that shaping your buy box allows you to spend the limited marketing dollars that you have on the types of houses you want to buy in the first place, instead of like the shotgun approach and just spraying and hoping for more. And I think if you were to look at the analytics of your business, you would know certain parts of town, even though you'll take something, let's say in the hood versus in the burbs, you're going to find out that if you focused on certain areas, um, that your profits will be much higher in those areas, right? If you have limited marketing dollars, you should shape them on where you can make the most money ultimately, right? We do some unique stuff like uh, rotating A and B lists. So this is essentially kind of the 80-20 rule for the top 20% of your list. We market every 30 days. For the bottom 80%, we rotate the leads every 60 days. Um, we handle return mail. So the post op we're big enough where the post office tells us what didn't get delivered and we can remove those from your list without you getting boxes of postcards and not knowing what the heck to do with them. Like you don't even get them back with us. You don't have to deal with that at all. We handle all of that. Uh, and then, by the way, we can skip trace them for you and give you the undeliverables because most people throw those away and do nothing with them. Those are some of the best leads, by the way, to go target are the postcards you got back because most real estate investors are lazy and they throw it in a box somewhere, they throw it in the trash, and um, they don't go skip trace those to try to find another way to get to them, right? If you're not doing that, you should be. Uh, we track delivery so we can tell you, there's, here's your order. It's been sent to the post office. The post office is marked as delivered. And we do some really unique stuff that we're testing right now. We've been actually rolling this out for quite some time now using AI to be able to listen to your calls and score the quality of your lead intake. Um, and then from the, the higher quality calls, we can create new audiences and put it back into our software and create new lists that we market to you in the first place. So some pretty amazing stuff. And I like to say it's, it's kind of like bringing a knife to a gunfight ultimately. So a lot of folks will tell you that their marketing is different and it's better. And I can tell you that there's nobody doing what we're doing. So uh, is that cool, guys? So, hey, I know that I shared this list with you guys a minute ago and everybody wanted to take pictures of it and probably and get it back. So if you want this list, by the way, uh, do me a favor and just text this word results, like results driven, but just results to this number. I'll leave this up for just a second here. And we'll send you the list of the 40 lists that we go after. And we're not afraid to share that with you guys because I'll tell you that it's a lot of work to go get it, right? It's a ton of work. And so happy to share it with you, though, if it helps you just text the word results to that number and we'll uh, we'll reply back with um, with getting that. So let's move on to outbound lead generation. So obviously, you know what it is, cold calling and SMS. If you guys are working with Josh and Tiffany, you know exactly what that is. These guys are really the best, no doubt about it. Um, but I, what I want to tell you is 
that the data quality you're using is still very critical. Now, if you're operating at mass, you might be downloading and skip tracing entire lists in your market. Um, and if you're not, and if you're niched down, the quality of that list is still critical, right? Like where does that list come from? I can tell you guys, and maybe you've experienced this, is I get texts, certainly on a weekly basis, I get calls, I get texts and calls every day from buyers and people that are trying to contact me to buy my rental properties or whatever. Um, but I get messages sometimes that are asking to buy a property that I haven't owned in a couple of years. I don't know if you guys ever get that, but I'm like, where is that list coming from? Like who is selling that list or who is still trying that old list, right? And I like to say that data is a lot like produce at the grocery store. Like it gets stale, it, it goes bad. It's got to get thrown away and recycled. So make sure that you're using high quality data in your business. And so, um, and then obviously one of the things about outbound lead generation is that it, it, it appears to be cheaper to do it, right? When you just buy data and text or call yourself, for those of you that are doing that, as you build a team out, you see that it starts to get more expensive and it's kind of a revolving door as you guys have seen. I know, I know that Josh and Tiffany are helping you guys with this a lot, but you build out the right team and you have less headaches. But for those of you that are doing all this yourself, you know that it's a grind to be told to F off like 10 times a day. Or if you're hiring lower quality people, virtual assistants or whatever that are doing this for you, it's just a revolving door of people kind of coming in and out because they get burned out, right? So uh, there's a place for both inbound and outbound marketing, no doubt about it. I want to talk briefly about relationship uh, buying. This is a critical component. And I know that a lot of you guys are, uh, you do some level of this. My partner, Jason Lewis at Investor Machine is one of the best that I know at this. He, he literally has relationship managers on his team that all they do is call wholesalers and call agents and build relationships with them, meet them for coffee, like all of these things um, to build relationships with people. So uh, those are some of the best deals that you'll get because they're usually not shopping around. They're not going to fill out 10 forms online and see who gives them the highest price. They're basing it on the relationship. And so relationship buying is really, really critical. And uh, if you're if you're trying to do this a little bit on the side, I would encourage you as you're scaling your business up to find dedicated resources that allow you to do this, that allow you to focus on buying from agents and wholesalers and other referrals. If you guys don't know, most realtors and agents, the average in America, and I think it's probably been down, do like a couple deals a year, right? A couple listings a year. And so um, if you find the right people that are doing a little bit more volume and they look like they're investor friendly and you're able to do things like let them double into deal, like maybe you'll list it with them when you resell it, if you're, if you're retailing it, things like that, um, then um, you're going to, if you treat relationships like you do paid advertising and you put some money at it and it's not just like going to a RIA club and grabbing some business cards. And if you, it's not, if that's not what networking is for you, if you treat it like a real business, you're going to see results from it. So it's important to create a system uh, of how you follow up with people, how you call them, how frequently you follow up with them and check in with them and things like that. Uh, Alex, we got a question. So what CRM do you recommend? So we're kind of agnostic to CRM. We we actually do not. We've thought about, we have thought in the past about creating a CRM. The truth is, is we work really well with all of the C, most of the CRM providers in the country are, are friends of mine. And uh, we just didn't want to go there. So uh, we don't, the, I would say the best CRM to use is the one that you're going to use and use it the way that it's kind of built. So there's a lot of great CRMs out there. Um, and what we do from our standpoint is we generate leads that come directly to you. So you can enter them in any CRM that you want. So yeah, we don't have a specific CRM. Let's talk about kind of the CEO game plan. So I talked a little bit about this briefly about how as the owner of the company, you need to have the right KPIs and processes in place that allow you to see what's going on in your business without you having to be involved in every single aspect of the business. So it's really critical that um, you, one, are constantly finding a way to get leadership training to become the leader that your company needs. I want you to ask yourself that question. And I struggle with this sometimes too. Are you the leader that your company needs right now, right? And so everybody here is different. Everybody has different personalities. But it's really important that you are constantly honing your skills because the way to really build this business, just like Josh and Tiffany have, is to build a team that has an amazing culture that people want to work at, where they can make a lot of money. And if they make a lot of money, that, may, that means that you made a lot of money, right? So it's really important that you are constantly becoming a better and better leader. Pardon me. Okay. And, and you have a scorecard in place that is tracking your KPI. So you have a your finger on the pulse of what's going on in your business 
at any moment, even if you're traveling or you're away from the office or whatever. That's where we all want to get, right? I mean, I don't think anybody would disagree with that. A lot of us want to be this absent CEO that never has to come into the office. I'm going to tell you that that's really, really hard. I know some people that have done it, uh, but it's really hard. And even the people that have done it, they're usually one key person on the team away from losing that person to be pulled right back into the business, right? And so it's hard to do in a business that isn't like super scaled up, but you can go for a week at a time or a day at a time or whatever, where you have a scorecard and you know exactly what's going on in your business. And then depending on where you are in your business, it's really important to be able to find ways to pull in an implementer or a COO or somebody that can help with managing the day-to-day -day operations. Because at the end of the day, nobody really wants to play that role. I mean, if you do, that's great. Right? But most of us don't want to be on call 24 seven for our business. We want all the things that our business can give us, but we don't want to be on call. And if you're in the first few years of your business, for years, I was that way where I just carried uh, after hours, I'm carrying the money phone, the phone that all the leads are coming into and all that. And you just get to a point where you're just burned out, right? Because you're trying to do everything. And so as you build your team out, it's really important that again, you're the leader that your company needs and you can manage from scorecards. Next, I want to talk about sales mastery. So um, there's kind of sales team mastery, some of the stuff that you're doing with Josh and Tiffany um, that are super powerful. And you need to be constantly training your sales team on how to get better. Now, these guys, honestly, these guys are the best that I've seen with like phone-based phone, phone -based sales teams. And these guys could do any sales training for sure. So it's really important that you're constantly training your team and also that you are training yourself to become a sales manager, right? You need to understand how to make your sales team work. And I'm going through some struggles in one of my companies where I hired somebody or I kind of put them in place. Again, somebody that already worked for us. I said, hey, I just want you to be kind of the sales manager and kind of deal with questions from the sales team. Uh, and it hasn't worked out particularly well, right? And I feel like I'm kind of distant and I don't know what's going on. And so it's really important that you become a great sales manager or that you know what it takes to be a sales manager. It's not that you can't back, backfill that role, but you need to keep your team motivated all the time. And especially in this business where they're not, you know, if you're scaled up, maybe, but they're not doing deals every single day. Like you could have salespeople in your business that do really well by buying a couple of deals, two or three deals a month even, right? And so what the problem is, is if it's, let's just say it's four deals a month, one a week, well, six days, they have doubt in their mind that they're never going to get another deal. And then one pops and they're happy for a day. And then the next day, oh, I don't know if I'm going to get another one like that, right? And so you have to be that coach that is helping keep them motivated and inspired to keep pushing forward, by the way, pushing them forward for you because they're trying to support you and your goals, right? So um, I think it's really important more so than ever to become great at doing creative deals, whether it's sub twos, novations, owner financing, and lots of other things so we can monetize. I like to say we can squeeze more juice from the fruit that we're already generating. So you don't necessarily have to spend more money on marketing. You just have to find way, more ways to monetize those. And you need to just become absolutely world-class at follow-up. Follow-up is, is an operational role, but it's part of the sales system because most of the leads that we generate today, and for people that I've known in the past that are like thump their chest at being a one-call closer, what you kind of realize is the people that focus on that being a one-call closer are leaving a lot of money on the table because most of the people that we talk to have needed to sell for years or decades, and they're just not ready yet. So if you do a good job of building a relationship and you do a great job at follow-up, you're more likely to get that deal, but it's just going to take time. So you have to be great at follow-up as well. Lastly, I want to talk about dispo domination, being able to dominate that and have that be great at all exit strategies. And so we've talked about this a little bit already. Having a world-class system and process for dispo right now is more important than ever. And if you're not buttoned up here, if you're still just spraying your list and you haven't even checked in with your list as to who's actively buying right now, and you're not focused and you're, or even worse, you're selling your deals to the same like four or five people that you've always sold them to. I promise you, you're leaving money on the table right now. Just like we talked about with a few other things here, like marketing and relationship buying is you need to treat this almost like its own mini business. Like how can you build this business? How can you invest money in this business to put the right people, processes, and systems in place that allow you to be world-class at Dispo. So good that other wholesalers in your market will ask you if you can sell their deals for them because they haven't put any effort into doing that. And where we're at in the market is you have to find a way to squeeze every dollar of profit you can because market, let's be honest, marketing costs are up 
and uh, deals are a little more sparse right now. And so you have to do whatever you have to do. So this is the time to get buttoned up. So guys, that is our marketing and sales success system. It's like what I like to call the roadmap to freedom, take you from frustrated to freedom, maybe. And so what I'd like to talk about, do you guys get some value from that? By the way, hopefully you did. I want to share like how we might be able to help you. I, I feel very adamant of all the things that we discussed here. You can go put those things in place yourself. Like you could do all of these things, right? These are an important part of your business. I don't think that anybody would deny these are important parts of the business. If you're spread thin and you're trying to do all these things yourself, any of these things, whether it's us or somebody else, I would advocate that you find somebody to help you with these things, just like you found Josh and Tiffany to help you with building out your sales teams. So I want to talk a little bit again about uh, Investor Machine. So for the past three and a half years, we've probably become the top done for you inbound lead generation service in the country. And that really has been our focus is we get better data and then we have done for you direct mail and we'll skip trace it for you if you want to do that. And that literally has been it. Now we do some trainings and some other things, but this is not only what I shared with you that I think it takes you to be successful to scale your marketing and sales system. This actually is the roadmap of our company now where we're all in on building out this marketing and sales success system. And a lot of these things we're working on right now and rolling out over the next 90 days. So again, we've been focused on lead gen only, but we are focusing on implementing uh, EOS and a system called Empire, if you're familiar with that, into our membership so that we can help our members with their goal planning process. We can evaluate your team from a skills assessment standpoint to make sure you have the right people in the right seats. We can help you develop what the perfect team should be like for you. And what we found by only providing lead gen for our customers is that if they call us and they say, hey, this isn't working right now, we don't know what to do. Like, we're like, well, that sucks. Like, how can we help? Can we talk through, like, what does your team look like? But going forward, we want to help people build those stronger businesses up front because honestly, we know it'll help them convert more leads. They'll be a better and a longer term customer for us and they'll be more successful in the process. And so that's why we're putting a lot of these things in place uh, from goal planning to assessing the team to helping define what the perfect team should look like and maybe helping you recruit those people if you need them. Inbound lead generation. This is literally you're the first people that have ever heard this, but soon we'll be rolling out uh, pay-per-click and SEO services. Uh, rolling out uh, kind of done for you outbound um, lead gen outbound in terms of calling and texting, not on the scale that, you know, not building a sales team like Josh and Tiffany teach you. But if you're calling a certain number of your leads, we can help with that. Training on relationship buying from uh, my partner, Jason Lewis, who I think is honestly one of the best in the, in the business, um, helping build kind of using EOS and Empire to build out your scorecards, help you with leadership training and things like that helping with sales training to help you uh, improve your teams and helping with training and systems and processes to help you dispo your deals more. So this is kind of where we're going as a company and we're working on these things hot and heavy. And this is kind of where we're rolling out over the next uh, 90 days. And it'll be a continuous process to improve just like all of us. So if you're interested in Investor Machine, what I want to tell you is as we start to roll these things out, we're going to start raising our price. We haven't raised our price on joining Investor Machine for the past three and a half years. And that will change. And so uh, for you guys that are here, because you're the first to hear about it and because of my relationship with Josh and Tiffany, we're not only uh, not going to raise our prices if you get in now, we're actually going to offer you a bonus of up to a $5,000 discount on joining uh, Investor Machine if you'd like to learn more. The way to do that is, and by the way, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, we're not pushy at all. If you're a fit for us, we're, we'd love to talk about it. If we're not a fit, then that's okay too. Um, is to simply use that same results. If you already texted it, you'll have the opportunity to not only get our list of the 40 lists, but to schedule a call with us as well. So if you text the word results to this number here, then we'll ask for your information. At the end, we'll send you the list of 40 lists that I shared earlier, uh, and you'll have a link to schedule a call with us to ask more. Also, by the way, see if your market's available. So we don't allow, we only allow a certain number of people per market and uh, see if your market is even available because we do serve a lot of people in a lot of markets already. So guys, that is all I have for you today. Um, I hope you've gotten some value from that. And uh, if we have any time, I know we're kind of gone almost the whole hour here, but happy to answer any questions that you guys, uh, if I missed any, or if there's any that you'd like to ask. Um, if you want to learn more about Investor Machine, it's best to talk to our team and, and probably ask some questions there, but happy to answer any questions I can have uh, that I can for you here in the next uh, few minutes. So 
Hope you guys yeah, hey, uh, Mike, Mike's going to stay on for a few minutes here to do, do a live Q and a, um, you know, just put your questions in the chat. It's a great resource to, to ping a lot of things on. He's been, you know, a real estate investor for many years, a lot of amazing things going on in an investor machine. So if you do have questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat and uh, we'll see if he can answer them. For those of you that know me, you know that my hair wasn't always this gray or whatever I'm pointing at here, right? Got some, uh, I like to say, got some arrow wounds in my back from, uh, but happy to help in any way I can. Is it best to position your business in the market as, um, as a house flipper or a wholesaler? For sellers, I don't think, I think you position yourself as a problem solver for their problems. Like you shouldn't even talk about what you do. I mean, you don't want to mislead anybody, but they don't, they often don't care what you're doing with the house. So I, I wouldn't position yourself as um, either of those. I would position yourself as somebody that helps people with challenging problems in real estate. That's how I would position that. So they don't, they're not even going to know. I mean, they'll know what house flipping is probably because of HGTV. They probably don't know what a wholesaler is. I wouldn't even go there. I would just talk about how you can solve their problem. Now, separately, if you are a wholesaler and you're trying to build up your dispo process, you're trying to build up your brand as somebody in your market that is the go-to for wholesale deals, um, I would position yourself as an authority in that space, right? But I would keep those brands separate, dispo side from the acquisition side. Because what you don't want is people to go to your brand for acquisitions and see that you're just marking their house up and selling it. You really want to keep those brands kind of separate. Um, how much would you budget for inbound lead generation for it to really gain traction? Here's what I would say. There, there, nobody, nobody knows the answer to that uh, because it's unique to how good are you at closing and it's very specific to what market you're in, right? So if you're in a major market, your cost per acquisition is generally higher, but the margins are generally higher too. So for example, it costs a lot more in marketing to get a deal in San Francisco than it does in Des Moines, Iowa right? Now, the deals are much bigger and the profits are much higher too. So um, our general rule of thumb is that you should be uh, you should be comfortable spending as little, I'm sorry, so 4X or more, so 4X or less on your marketing, on your deal. So let me say that another way. If your average margin on a deal is 20 grand, would you be willing to spend 5,000 in advertising to get a deal? especially if that's scalable. And now you can spend 20, you can spend 10 and do two deals and make 40, right? Now you want your 4X, you want your uh, return on that advertising to be above 4X, but the threshold for, should I, can because obviously you have some other costs, you have acquisitions, manager commissions, maybe you're going to have some other costs in there, right? So um, you should be looking for at least a 4X return on your investment. I'd encourage you guys to go look at all your channels right now and see what that return is. And so it will tell you kind of how you're performing now. And then you can say, that's your expectation for going to new marketing is that you need to achieve that or better. If you're really scaling up, I will tell you, because we work with some people that spend tens and tens of thousands. We have some customers that spend over a hundred thousand a month. They know that maybe they're getting a six or seven X return on their investment. And as they start to scale more and more, that return on investment comes down. That's just how advertising works. You hit this point of diminishing returns. And they know that, hey, I went from an 8X return to a 6X return. They're not going to quit. They just ex accept that it's still really good. So I'm going to keep going until I can kind of max that out, right? So again, it all comes down. The first thing that we talked about here was goal setting. What are your goals? And I think in this industry, it's been really easy for people to try to wrap goals around being like somebody else. Like, just be you. Like, find out what your goals are. What makes sense for you and your family and your dreams and stuff? and build a plan around that. Uh, but I do think that you should look at what is your return on investment right now? And if you know what your average margin is, you should be looking for a minimum of a 4X return on investing in that channel. Hopefully that answers that. Awesome, guys. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up, Mike. I just want to thank you for getting on, man. You dropped a lot of great nuggets. Um, and if anybody on the call wants to hook up with Mike and his team, just make sure you guys tech, text results to the phone number uh, that they got listed here for you. 
Uh, but other than that, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for everybody that got on and uh, you guys have a great day. Thank you guys. Have a great day.